Hello everyone. There was a man who used to constantly go into a small locked room in his house and come out looking troubled. Eventually one day a neighbor asked him, "Hey, I have seen you many times going into the room and then coming out disturbed. By the way, what is in the room?" "The room is empty," the man replied. But every time I enter, I feel like someone is in the room. I think someone is stealing the emptiness. Show me, the neighbor said. The man reluctantly opened the door and both went in. Once they were in the room, the neighbor said, "There is no one in this room except you and me." It is getting worse, screamed the man. Yesterday there was only me in here, but today there are too many. friends in ordinary usage the word empty has a negative connotation it generally evokes a feeling of anxiety or sadness for not having or lacking something such as an empty room an empty bottle an empty pocket and so on by contrast an empty tomb evokes feelings of elation happiness excitement and joy particularly among christians because there is a powerful and mysterious but true story behind the empty tomb which is known as the easter story friends all the four gospel writers matthew mark luke and john report the details of the easter story differently yet they are remarkably united on some fundamental facts especially the discovery of the empty tomb when we put all the pieces together The wonder of the empty tomb story shines out in even greater glory. Friends, according to the gospels, on the third day after Jesus' burial, some women went to the tomb with spices to anoint the body of Jesus. When they arrived, they found the stone covering the entrance of the tomb rolled away and the tomb empty. As they were standing there in a state of shock, disbelief and fear, An angel appeared and comforted them saying that Jesus was not among the dead but among the living. He was alive and had risen from the dead. When they heard this, they quickly went back with great joy and told some of Jesus' disciples about it. Understandably enough, not only did the disciples not expect this, but they also did not believe their report. Nevertheless, they got up and ran to the tomb. Perhaps the closer they got to the tomb, the more concerned they became. Eventually, upon entering the tomb, they saw the burial clothes, but not the body of Jesus. And one of the disciples believed in the resurrection. Friends, following this event, Jesus appeared to his other disciples many times and gradually took away all their doubts, fears and sorrows. and fill them with trust courage joy and peace instead thus the empty tomb of jesus christ became a sign of a gain not a loss of courage not fear of trust not doubt and of joy not sadness friends in fact in the scriptures there is still much more to the empty tomb one The empty tomb is an indication of the futility of life without God. Friends, without God, we would have no life at all. Remember, as soon as Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating from the only tree he had told them to avoid, they became aware not only of their nakedness but also of an emptiness deep in their souls. Because through their disobedience, they damaged their relationship with God and with each other. friends we too know that emptiness when we rebel against his right to be our lord consequences follow just as they did with adam and eve our rebellion ruptures our relationship first with god and secondly with others when the relationship is ruptured it creates a gap and then it soon gives way to confusion and emptiness as yes, indeed when we do not involve god in every area of our life we would wallow in abject emptiness however we can never fill it with some new experience or acquisition we will remain empty 
for only God through his son Jesus Christ can fill that emptiness. Friends, at one point in John 15, Jesus says, Live in me as I live in you. The branch cannot bear fruit by itself, but has to remain part of the vine. So neither can you if you don't remain in me. 2. The empty tomb is also an indication of the fertility of the power of Satan. Friends, the Bible says that the consequence of sin is death, eternal separation from God. But God's only Son, Jesus Christ, came to earth to pay the penalty for our sin, so we would not die eternally separated from Him. Friends, when Jesus died on the cross, He fully paid once and for all for our sins and offered us complete forgiveness and eternal life. Friends, now with an empty tomb, Christ has destroyed Satan's powerful weapon, death. He has rendered Satan powerless to condemn us and to enslave us by our fear of death and judgment. That is, we will not be judged by God according to our sins. Rather, we will stand before God robed in Christ's own righteousness. As it is written in the book of Revelation, we will not be hurt at all by the second death, and the second death has no power over us. Friends, Today, as we stand once again before the empty tomb, with awe and wonder, with the praise and adoration, with thanksgiving and gratitude, we shall pray to our risen Lord Jesus Christ, that he may show us in the emptiness of our lives the fullness of his glory, that he may give us courage to endure all disappointments, hardships, trials, uncertainty, distress and sadness, that he may free us from the fear of death and dying, and that he may fill our hearts with hope, love, joy, and peace. Amen. God bless you.